Hey folks, welcome to the Energy Sketch. I'm Michael Johnson. We're going to talk today about the challenge of decarbonizing islands. And here we're showing a Google Earth view of the eastern seaboard of Canada showing Quebec. And it's been in the news lately, this island of Quebec, the Ile de la Madeleine. And it's a small island uh, here off the coast uh, near PEI. And it's currently powered by diesel fuel. Well, actually not just diesel fuel, but marine bunker fuel burned in a thermal power plant in some reciprocating engines. But the sad thing, right, is that Quebec has abundant renewable hydropower, clean, green electricity. But this island is remote and it's disconnected from the grid. So they're forced to burn uh, diesel fuel. And this is the same plight that many, many islands around the world and remote areas that are disconnected from the grid, the same challenge uh, that's faced by all of these islands. So we can think for a moment about what the options are on the table for supporting decarbonization of remote areas and islands uh, such as this one. There's a few of them. The first one that's been in the news was uh, putting a cable undersea cable from Quebec or from PEI, from the Atlantic provinces, over to the island. That's one option. There's a cost associated with that. And there was some news recently that this option is now off the table for Hydro-Quebec because of the difficulty of getting the equipment. There's so many projects, so many undersea transmission projects that it's difficult to acquire the necessary equipment these days. And inflation also is not helping that costs are, are going up. The other option could be local wind or solar resources coupled with storage. This was also mentioned in the news. Uh, the solar is a bit of a challenge because of the small land area available on the island, probably not enough to power the whole island. And wind still faces opposition from locals for the views and the impacts potentially on wildlife and other challenges. Other option mentioned, uh, which is only really a partial decarbonization of the island, is moving from diesel to LNG, uh, liquefied natural gas, methane, CH4, which has a lower carbon footprint per megawatt hour of electricity that's generated compared to diesel or bunker fuel, but still generating carbon. And the other option is transitioning from diesel to what we might call carbon neutral fuels, e-fuels, solar fuels, or biomass or other things. So there's a whole plethora of these options that we would call something like power to X, where you would take renewable power on the mainland of Quebec and turn it into chemical fuels such as H2, hydrogen, ammonia, methanol, or even these other metal fuels that I've mentioned like iron or aluminum. And there's also biomass uh, based fuels that would uh, also be an option. So I wanna to talk today specifically about hydrogen to really illustrate the scale of the challenge in going from diesel fuel to hydrogen. And so last week I showed this graph references in the description here, and this is the energy density on the vertical axis in kilowatt hours energy content per liter. And we're looking at that specifically today. Now, if you compare diesel to compressed hydrogen gas, the compressed hydrogen gas has actually one tenth of the energy density per unit volume as diesel and this has massive implications for the size and the cost of the storage infrastructure that's needed to decarbonize these types of remote areas so let's take a look at this oh yeah and remember disclaimer here we're going to talk about some numbers all opinions are my own everything is an estimate no guarantees no refunds uh, let's take a look at this picture. This is from the Hydro-Quebec's website references that are in the description of the video. This is the thermal power plant, the Capomul thermal power plant here with those six smokestacks. There are six uh, diesel engines in that plant. And those two giant blue tanks there are where they store the 40 million, approximately 40 million liters of diesel fuel in those two tanks that are each about 30 meters in diameter and 30 meters high. And to give you a better feeling for the scale, here's a picture of the firemen from the island walking down the steps. Look at how many freaking steps there are on those giant tanks. Again, these photos are from Hydro-Quebec's website. References are in the description. Now let's imagine for a moment 
that we need to store the equivalent energy in the form of hydrogen. So as I mentioned, we would need 10 times the volume of hydrogen. So that would be about this many tanks. And it's actually worse than that because hydrogen requires larger you know, walls of the tanks. You need really heavy steel tanks to contain the compressed hydrogen versus diesel, which is just simply a pretty simple uh, steel tank. So this gives you an idea of the scale of the challenge of storing large relevant industrial quantities of energy in the form of hydrogen here specifically times 10 in volume and so times at least 10 and if not more in terms of cost also and this is one of the big challenges and in future episodes i'll get into maybe what it would look like for other options like metal fuels like iron and or aluminum and that's it for today's episode, folks, talking about the challenge of decarbonizing islands. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Tune in next week, Monday, 12, 12 p.m., youtube.com slash at Energy Sketch. Have a great week, folks. Toodaloo!